Hello, friends and family. Welcome to Come Sit at My Table. My name's Tom. My wife, Melissa, is videoing for us. Every winter for the last several years, Melissa and I have gone south for a few weeks to escape the cold and snow. And this winter, we're doing the same. When we go for a few weeks, we really don't like to eat in a restaurant for every single meal and it gets a little expensive. So we have always taken some meals with us. And what we have found is it's much easier, much less work if we make meals here and take them with us to our destination. So today we are going to make a freezer meal called baked ravioli casserole. It's a really good meal. It's a great meal to make as a freezer meal because it freezes really well and it's easy to stick in your refrigerator a day or two before you want to use it. You can thaw it out in the refrigerator and when you're ready to bake it, you just stick it in the oven and let it bake. Now, if you're going to bake it when you make it, you're not going to make a freezer meal, you're literally going to make it in a baking uh, casserole pan and you're going to bake it immediately, you're going to need to set your oven to 400 degrees. So just know that that will come first. But let me show you what you're going to need for baked ravioli casserole. You're going to need two 24 ounce jars of your favorite pasta sauce. Now we just happen to like this one best and so that's what we buy. But whatever your favorite pasta sauce is, you're going to need about 48 ounces. We do two 24 ounce jars. You're going to need one teaspoon of garlic powder and one teaspoon of onion powder. You're going to stir that into your pasta sauce along with a 28 ounce can of petite diced tomatoes. Now, if you can't find the 28 ounce can, that's fine. Get two 14 ounce cans. It's the same thing. Um, sometimes I can find the 28 ounce can, sometimes I can't. Sometimes I can't find the 14 ounce cans. So you just need about 28 ounces of diced tomatoes. And those things right there will get stirred together. Your pasta sauce, your seasonings, and your diced tomatoes. Then you're also going to need about three pounds of ravioli. Now we just happen to really like spinach and ricotta cheese ravioli. And so that's what I bought. Now I have always used frozen ravioli. I've always found it in the freezer section at our grocery store, either Kroger or Walmart, but I haven't been able to find it for a while. So I was in Walmart a couple of days ago, just checking again to see if they had the frozen ravioli and they didn't. Just so happened one of my former students was working in that area. Um, I think actually he might be a manager in the frozen food section. And so I asked Eddie about it and he was like, we really don't have any spinach ravioli in the frozen food section, but there is some back in the deli. So he ran back to the deli area and got three bags of spinach ravioli um, for me. And this will work just fine. It doesn't have to be frozen, but I just want you to know if you can find the frozen, it is much more affordable and you don't have to thaw it. You can literally take it out of the bag frozen and put it right into your casserole and bake it. You do not have to have fresh ravioli and you don't have to let the frozen thaw. <coughs> Pardon me. Then you're also going to need 12 to 16 ounces of Italian style cheese. Now there are different variations of Italian cheese. This one says it has mozzarella, provolone, parmesan, romano, fontina, and asiago. We love all those cheeses. So that's what I'm using, but just find an Italian blend of cheese and you're gonna need at least 12 to 16 ounces. We like ours really cheesy, so I got the 16 ounce package, but 
Honestly, you may want even a little more than that. Now, I won't be doing the next part on the, this video because we're not baking this. We are going to make it today and then we're going to freeze it to take with us on our trip. But when we get ready to bake it, I will add some Parmesan cheese to the top of it. I will just use a microplane and we will grate some Parmesan, Parmesan cheese right over top of it um, when it comes out of the oven. We won't do that before it bakes because with this on top, it could maybe get a little too brown, um, but we will put that on just before it comes out, then maybe stick it back in for a minute or two and let this melt on top of it. But just know that this is one of the ingredients, but you won't see me use it today. Okay, so here's how we get started. We are going to stir together our pasta sauce and our seasonings and our diced tomatoes. We're just gonna put those in a bowl together. You know, I'm going to get out every speck of that that I can get out. We're going to add our onion powder and our garlic powder. Just put that in. Get every bit of that. And our well-drained tomatoes. Now, you want these tomatoes drained as well as you can possibly get them drained. You sure don't want that juice in there thinning out your pasta sauce. So just drain them really well. I've probably let these set, I actually drained them over the sink for probably 10, 15 minutes before I put them on this plate. And you can see that even after letting them drain over the sink, still some juice came out of them. So just drain those really well. Then all we're going to do is stir that together. I'm just going to tell you, mm, that already smells delicious. Sure does. Ooh, that'll eat. Mm. Okay. So, we have all that out of the way. Now, because we're doing a freezer meal, I am not using a glass baking dish. Number one, I wouldn't want to put my glass baking dish in the freezer and leave it for a couple of weeks and, you know, not be able to use it for anything else. So I'm just using a disposable aluminum pan. This is what we use most winters. And I really don't like using aluminum. But I haven't found a better alternative for freezer meals that we're going to take on a trip with us. And the reason I use them is when we get there and we eat it all, we just throw this away. So that's what I'm using today. Now, we need to spray this pan with some nonstick spray. And I know what you're saying. Well, you're not going to clean that pan anyway. You're going to throw it away. Well, that's true. But I don't want it burning on the bottom or sticking to the bottom. Now we're going to start by just putting a layer of our pasta sauce on the bottom of the pan. And I'm just going to spread it out so that it's pretty thin. Make sure it's covering the bottom. It doesn't have to cover the bottom completely, but you want it, you want a good little layer down here. Um just want some under your ravioli. Okay, shake that out just a little bit, kind of even it up. I got a spot right there that I want just a little bit. Okay, now we are, if I can figure out how to open this ravioli. I have never used this brand before, but I'm sure it will be fine. Well, my goodness, that's the toughest bag I've ever seen. Right there, right, now I've got it. And all we're going to do is just 
put in a layer of ravioli. Have to squish them together a little bit. Is that a technical cooking term? That's a very, very technical culinary term. Is that something we would hear at a- Professionally learned, I'm sure. Yeah, at a French cooking school. Mm -hmm. The word squish. We have a lot squish of- Squish them together. Professional culinary terms. <laughs> Well, welcome to the country. Because we're fancy that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are. Mm -hmm. We're fancy and we squish things. You're funny. Yeah, we're fancy. Okay. So once we have a layer of our ravioli down. See if I can squeeze one more in there. It really kind of begs me that there's not That there's the only three on that row and four on all the others? All the others. Okay. Fix that. Got it. Does that make you feel better? So, yes. I'm You're not OCD, easy. so what's wrong with you? Yeah, but that just did kind of okay. a little bit. So now we have our layer of sauce and we have our layer of ravioli. Now we're going to put on a layer of our cheese. Now you can decide how many layers you're going to do. Um, honestly, I don't like a thin little casserole. I don't like to do at least three layers. And it looks like I'm gonna have plenty of ravioli to do three layers. And we will be sharing this, so we want to have Yeah, we nice will. That's right while we're there. Yeah, while we're on our trip, we have people who eat with us. And so we, it won't just be the two of us eating it. Okay, so I've got that down. Now I'm going to put another layer of our pasta sauce. Now, as you can tell, there is no meat in this. This is, now if you wanted to, you could have meat in it. You could use something besides the um, spinach ravioli. You could find ravioli with meat in it and make this a meat dish. But, and let me tell you, there is nobody that's a bigger meat eater than me. I love meat. So, for me to say it's okay to have this with spinach ravioli is saying something. It's excellent. It really is good. Okay, so here we have our layer of pasta sauce over our ravioli and cheese. Now, I'm going to continue just layering. I'll do a layer of ravioli, some cheese, more pasta sauce. We just wanna make sure that we save enough cheese to top it with. So let me go ahead and make another couple layers and when we have it almost put together, we'll come back and let you see how we finish it. We'll be back in just a minute. I have been able to get three layers of ravioli in here. And as you can tell, this pan is a little deeper than a normal nine by 13 pan. In a normal nine by 13 pan, I've never gotten three layers. I've only done two. But because this is a little deeper, I was able to get three layers in there. So I did. And we have a little ravioli left over. So Melissa and I will have that for a meal, probably tomorrow evening. And I did try to divide my pasta sauce out enough so that I'd have a little bit left to put on top of this third layer. Normally, I only need two layers, but I did try to divide it out. It smells so good. <laughs> it really does. Very good. I apologize for scraping the bowl, but it's just what I do. And I believe in getting it all out. 
Okay, let's try to spread this at least a little bit. Get some on each piece of ravioli. And then we will top this with the rest of our Italian blend cheese. And then it will go in the freezer. Okay. So there is that. So if you were gonna make one of these for your family, you could actually double it and just freeze one and have it later. That would be a really- Absolutely, and we have done Good that. time saver. In fact, I think the last time I made this, we did four. We fixed one for dinner and we put three in the freezer. So, absolutely. Way better than anything Stouffer's just gonna fix for you too. Yeah, boy, isn't that the truth? And there's nothing wrong with Stouffer's. No, but this is gonna be a lot Man, better. Man, this is so much better. Now, this is really full, but I am not putting the lid on this right now. Um, because I will freeze it first. I learned a long time ago that if you freeze it with the lid on it, all of your cheese sticks to the lid. And then when you try to take the lid off, all your cheese comes off with it. And you do not want that. You want your cheese on your food, not on your lid. I have to show people what you do to your lid though. Oh, okay, oh well. Don't let me forget after I get this cheese on there. I want cheese all over this. And Melissa made a good point while the camera was off. Um, she said, is this going to bubble over when it bakes since we did fill it so full? Well, you know, there's a real possibility of that. So when I bake this, I will put a uh, cookie sheet, a sheet pan under it. And you should do that whether it's full or it's not full. You should always put a pan under anything like this that you're baking that could bubble up. So I will put this in the freezer just like this and I will leave it overnight. Tomorrow morning when it's frozen solid, I will put the lid on top and you can just see here what I've done to the lid. I always label it with the name of the dish and I always put the, the directions for thawing it out and baking it. So this just says baked ravioli casserole, place in refrigerator until thawed, 24 to 48 hours, bake at 400 degrees, covered for 30 minutes, then uncover and bake another 15, then top with Parmesan. So I will take this off when I get ready to bake it. I will not bake it with this lid on it. I will probably use a piece of aluminum foil and kind of tint it over the top of the casserole so it's not touching and let it bake for 30 minutes, take it off, bake another 15, take it out, put my Parmesan on top. I'll just use my microplane, put some Parmesan on it, stick it back in for just a few minutes to let that Parmesan melt and then I will probably let this set, I think when we've done it before, we've let it set like 15, 20 minutes so that whatever juice has been released during the baking absorbs into those ravioli. And that way it's not runny. You don't want it to be runny. So 400 degrees, covered, bake for 30 minutes, uncover, bake another 15, Put your Parmesan on top and then bake for just long enough for it to melt that Parmesan cheese. All right, we are going to stick this in the freezer, let it freeze overnight. Tomorrow morning I will cover it and we will take it with us when we go on our trip in a couple of weeks. Um, we are not going to post this video right now. We're going to wait until we get to our destination and when we get ready to bake it, we will show you what it looks like. We'll remind you of the baking directions. And then we'll show you once it's baked what it looks like. So it's going to be a few weeks before this gets posted. But hopefully once you see it, it'll look so good you'll just have to make baked ravioli casserole. All right. We will see you real soon. 
We started our baked ravioli casserole back home in Kentucky. We made it as a freezer meal, froze it solid, covered it, and we've brought it with us on vacation to Florida. Now today, we've taken it out of, the, we actually we took it out of the freezer a couple of days ago and left it in the refrigerator so that it could completely thaw. And then this morning, we took it out of the refrigerator and left it sit out for about an hour to come to room temperature. Then we baked it at 400 degrees for 30 minutes covered. After 30 minutes, we removed the cover and we've baked it an extra 15 to 20 minutes. You just wanna make sure that it's warm in the middle. There's our timer. You wanna make sure it's hot in the middle and that the cheese on top has melted and kind of browned a little bit. So let's take it out and check it to see what it looks like. Oh yeah. I'm gonna need another towel. It's heavy. Okay. Turn that light on so you can get a good picture. That is the baked ravioli casserole. Turn it around here where you can get a good picture of it. And really, we probably should let it sit for a few minutes and cool down a little bit before we scoop some out, but. I'm gonna go ahead and do it just so we can show you what it looks like. Take a piece out of the corner right here. Cheese loose. Mm. Oh, it smells good. All right, Melissa. Can you get a good picture of that? Now, I'm gonna set this down here and I'm gonna grab a fork. I know that's going to be hot. Are you ready for a bite? No, I'm gonna wait because I'm afraid it'll be too hot. <laughs> so you're okay with it burning <laughs> me, but. I'm gonna let you take one for the team this time. hot. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. That is delicious. It is so nice to have meals in the freezer. All you have to do is take them out a day or two before you want to use them, let them thaw in the refrigerator or take them out and leave them on your counter for a few hours for them to thaw and bake them and you've got a meal. Mm. Good Italian meal. Okay. By the way, we're putting a salad and breadsticks with this. Great meal. All right. If you would, we would appreciate you going below this video and clicking the thumbs up. It just says you like our video. If you haven't already, go over on the right side below the video and click the subscribe button and the little notification bell. And if you would like to, we would appreciate you sharing our video. As always, Melissa will put the written recipe in the description box right below the video. Just click on the title that's below the video, the title of this video, and it will expand that box and the written recipe will be there. Thank you so much for watching our videos. We appreciate it. And remember, you are always welcome to come sit at my table. Have a great day.